Hey, how you doing out there in YouTube land? This is Delito coming at you from the Wild Wild West. And today, what we got for you is my old bucks. Just like I told you I was going to do, I was going to make a video on my old bucks, and here they are. These date back to the 70s. Okay, well, let's get started. Let's first start off with my oldest buck. This one right here. Carried this one for a long time, for about 10 years. I got it when I was about, I think it was like 14 years old when I got this. My father gave it to me as a Christmas present. It was the first hunting knife that he gave to me. Maybe I was, maybe, maybe I was even younger. I might have been like 13 or something like that. Because I think I got my hunting license when I was like 12 or something like that. But this is the one with the finger grooves. It's from the 70s. It has the ebony wood handles before they were banned. The ebony wood handles. And these, let's get the measurements for them. The blade is about three and three quarters, if I'm not mistaken. This one's almost four inches. It's above three and three quarters. The handle. It's about four and four quarters, close to five inches. Overall length, about eight and a half inches. And that's the buck, the buck 110, the classic buck 110. This is my oldest one. And this one's been through hell. This is, this is its case. You can ask, why does the buck case look like that? There's a story behind it. This is the way I used to carry it for years. Even when the case was messed up, I still carried it for years like that. This knife went down in an accident with me. When I was 16 years old, I had a motorcycle accident. On my first motorcycle, it was a Suzuki 554, a GS554. That was my first motorcycle. I remember I got a job working at Tiki Grocery Store as a box boy because I wanted the motorcycle. My dad wouldn't buy me a motorcycle when I turned 16. He said, if you're going to get a motorcycle, you're going to have to get it on your own because they're too dangerous. And he said, he didn't, didn't want to buy me anything that I can get hurt on. And so, uh, so I had to get it on my own. So I got a job working at Tiki Grocery Store. And I worked there for about almost about a year before I saved up enough money to get my motorcycle and paid cash for it. It was 1600, about 1600 bucks brand new for a brand new 554, 1976. And after three months of owning it, this is what happened. <laughs> I went down on, after about three months on the motorcycle. It messed up, messed up my case, but the knife still stayed intact. The case protected the knife. It just sort of slid along the pavement. I got all road rashed everywhere. I was wearing a pair of shorts when I went down, so you can imagine how road rash I was in the summertime in California. Now, before I knew about safety, there, there, there wasn't no helmet law, so I wasn't wearing any helmets. I just wearing t-shirts and shorts and some tennis shoes. And I was racing my buddy Tavo through the park. But, and I hit a bunch of leaves and went down. But anyway, this was the case. That's my... Knife that has the biggest story probably <laughs> is this one. My Buck 110. That's my oldest knife. This is a special edition buck. I can't remember when I got it. I think it was in the 80s or let's see it has a date on it. 1988 was when this one was made. It's a 25th anniversary, famous, 1963 to 1963 is when they start making these knives, 110s. I think they actually went to major production and people, they're available for everybody in 1964, but I think they just start making them in 1963. I think they're made by Al Buck. I think that's the, the, the name of the knife maker. 
the design that the Buck 110. Folding Hunter, 20, 25th anniversary. Buck 110 USA. All mine, all these, all these are the high carbon 420 HC. They didn't have none of the fancy steels back in these days. They didn't exist yet. But this one, instead of having brass bolsters, has nickel silver bolsters. A lot of the special edition ones nowadays have the nickel silver bolsters and you get whatever kind of scales you want. I'm not sure what kind of scales these are. Because I know in the 70s they had ebony and I know they got, they got outlawed. And this sort of looks like the ebony. So it might be ebony. It might be the last ones when they had ebony. I'm not sure. It's either ebony or the, what they call the ironwood. These are ironwood. I know that. I'll let you look at the difference. This is a more modern one. This one was bought in the 90s. I start carrying bucks again. And I bought, I bought this one to replace my first one. Because it was kind of beat up looking. It had battery acid on the blade and all sorts of stuff. Because I used to, I've always ridden motorcycles and my buck was like my biker blade. It was more than a hunting knife. It, it went everywhere at me when I was on the motorcycle. Everywhere. It was my, my everyday carry. I think this is the ironwood. And I'm pretty sure this might be the ebony. If you can see the difference. The, the wood's a different color. Same spec, same everything. <coughs> this is just a generic <coughs> buck with finger grooves. It costs a little bit more than the one without the finger grooves. It's like an added feature. But these were bought, uh, the, this one was bought in the 90s. I'm pretty sure. Same thing with this one. This one was bought in the 90s too, I'm pretty sure. This ironwood also. I think I bought them at the same time. You know, I always, always like to buy two knives at a time. This one right here. Okay, now we're out of the bucks. These are all my buck 110s. These are all bucks. These are other brands right here. This one is a, is it a queen? I want to say it's the queen. And it's called the Nighthawk. I'm pretty sure this is my queen cutlery. It has nickel bolsters. I'm not sure what kind of wood that is. Heavy duty build. The thickness and everything's like pretty much like a buck. I think the buck is a point one two zero of an inch. Like three millimeters or something like that. I'm not sure. And that's the queen. Which one? This is the Remington. Made in, all these are made in USA. All these knives are made in USA. And that, this is a Remington. I, I'm not sure when I bought this. I want to say I probably bought it on eBay like in the 90s. I want to say the 90s, but I don't know how old it is. It might be older than when I bought it. It has nickel silver bolsters, jig bone handle scales, and it's made by Remington, the gun company. Made in USA. And it's called this Model R9. Remington trademark. Did you guys see that? I don't know if you can see. I don't know if the glare's messing with it. I'm trying to let you see the blade tang so you can see the markings. Okay. On the R9. And that's the Remington. Next one up. I think this is a charade. Looks like a charade. Old charade. Uncle Henry charade. USA. USA. Back when charade was made in USA. Brass bolsters. Not sure what kind of wood. None of these steels really tell you what kind of steels they are too. And I can't remember what kind of steels they were. They might be all 420. I'm not sure. 
420 or 440. Those are the steals that they had back then. Charay. I keep all the cases and everything in my safe so they don't get messed up with all the boxes and stuff because I try to keep things as pristine as possible like when I first get them. So if I ever want to sell things down in the future or whatever, because that's sort of my plan to have a collection and then when I hit my retirement and I retire, what I can do in my retirement is I can sell and trade pocket knives. That's, what, that's, that's, why, was, that's why I've been keeping all my knives all the way up until I, I, I get ready to retire. And then if you guys are still around, if you want to buy some old knives that are really cool, you can. Because I'll have them for sale. <laughs> but that's my retirement plan. It's for extra money during my retirement. I can sell knives. Okay. This is a case. Double X. USA. I'm trying to see... Because sometimes you can tell how old it is by the markings, but I can't tell. I need new glasses. I think this one was bought in the 90s, too. When I started really getting into collecting knives, it was like in the 1990s. All the knives I had before then were just like user knives that I used. <laughs> Which is a lot. Case. It's got the... Brass, brass handles... Brass, brass bolsters and liners, saw like one piece, just like a buck knife. This looks like ebony wood. I'm not sure what it is. And this is the hammerhead, and it's got a depiction of a hammerhead shark on it. Okay. One more. I got another case. Got my old knives. I've always liked case knives. I got a lot of case pocket knives. A lot of ones that are slip joints. <clears throat> One day I'll show you all my slip joint collection too. I got slip joints too. Yes, I do. I got slip joints. Because before I started getting into tactical knives, I was into all these, what we call the traditional and classic knives. And I didn't start getting into tactical knives until the 2000s pretty much. So prior to the 2000s, I started collecting knives. My knife collection goes back to 1960s, like the mid 1960s when I was a little kid. And I've kept lot, I've kept knife, my knives all my life, most of them. Lots of them. There's a few of them that I lost that were like really great, but uh, most of my knives I've had all my life, I, I still have them, and I've kept them. So I got a pretty vast collection from 1960 until about mid 1960s until now. And all my knife collection, they're all knife, single blade knives. I like single blade knives. I don't like multi-blade knives. Even my, even my, uh, what do you call it? Even my, uh, 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 my slip joints and my copper locks and rust locks, they're all, they're all single blade knives. Rust lock is like the original kind of liner lock. It's like what was on the, um, the, the other one I showed you last week. The charades, 125 OTs and the 127 UHs and the 500 SCs. The big K, the big um, charade folding hunter. The the locks that are on those, I would call that like a rust lock because it's like a copper lock or rust lock, brass lock. It's a liner lock. It's like the original version of the liner lock. These are really beautifully made. And that's the reason why I always hold on to these because I just think. Even though these were heavy and kind of bulky, the craftsmanship that went into them was like really awesome. And the one piece handle scales and bolsters, all milled out of brass or nickel silver. Very nice. These are some very nice knives. It's one thing I sort of miss about old knives as compared to the new ones. The new ones are like pretty much kind of boring because they're all pretty much the same, you know, generally. You know, generally, they, they, you know, they're all pretty much like this. You know, they all got G10. I love G10. Don't get me wrong. I love G10. It's my favorite handle, handle material is G10. G10, but they're all, they all got G10, and they all got, I don't know, this one has an S35 VM blade. They all got, power, you know, fancy steel blades. You know, the ones I like to get anyway. But anyway, this is a new, this is a new buck. <clears throat> 
This is a Buck Pro Plus. A Buck Pro Plus. And the plus means that you get S35V in steel and you get G10 that's lined with red micarta. It's really a pretty buck for a lightweight knife. And it's very lightweight. Very lightweight. The only thing I don't like about these new, new bucks is that I think that they should have... Um, there's a couple things. Because I love the bucks. These are classics. These are classics. I wouldn't change these for anything. But this is a new one. And it can be updated. And they already updated it with better steel, better handle material that's a lot lighter. You know, it's not as pretty looking, but it is a lot lighter. And you can still get the classic bucks. They still make those. These are just a, a separate line. They're light line. And uh, but I wish that they would have had adjustable pins in them, screw pins, instead of um, these riveted pins or whatever that you can't adjust or take out or take the knife apart or clean it or anything. That's, that's a big flaw in this one to me. And the other thing is, I wish they would have put a mid-lock on it. So you can open it and close it with one hand. See, right now the way it is, you got to open it, I mean, close it with the rear lock release. And it opens up with one hand just fine. It opens up just fine. It's a little bit stiff, but it sort of feels like in between, you know, a slip joint and a, and a modern knife. You know, but, because it's basically, you know, like, all these knives are like old-style knives where they have... You know, they open up old ways. The blade doesn't just fly open. You have to, it's pretty much a two-handed knife. Unless you put like a thumb stud thing on it. But I absolutely love these. I just wish they did a couple little different things. I love, buck, I love buck knives, as you can tell. I just wish they would have put a midlock on this one. So you can open and close it. Just like, you know, like a cold steel. Open and close it and flick it. But they didn't do that. They stuck to the old style, which is cool. They, they kept it traditional with modern materials. Basically, that's all they did. The blade thickness and everything is pretty much all the same. The blade length, this one is a touch shorter. It's just a touch shorter. And the reason why, I think, is because the handle length are the same. As you can see, it's kind of short for the handle, the blade is. But that's the way these are made. And that's the difference in the blade handle, I mean, in the length of the handle and stuff like that, is that. Let me pull one of these out so you can just compare the length and size of it. Let's see. See, as you can see, the buck is like about the old style buck, the 110. I would say it's a quarter of an inch longer. About a quarter of an inch longer. The blade length is where the difference is. The handle length is the same. I don't know, the handle length might be a little bit shorter too. The handle length might be a touch shorter. And the blade length is a touch shorter. But it's a beautiful knife. This one I'm going to collect. Because this is a Pro Plus with S35VN. So it's going to be a collector. I'm not going to use it. The one I want to use is this one. This one's going in my drawer. And this is the one with 420HC. And all, all these knives have the Boss Heat Treat on them. All the Bucks do. They have Boss Heat Treat on them. And so 420C with the Boss Heat Treat is like, I don't know, it's like a step above, I don't know, like Oz 8. It's a little bit better than Oz 8. Might be more like, uh, I don't know. It's, it's better than Oz 8, though. It'll cut, uh, the edge lasts longer than Oz 8. But it's not no super steel or anything. It's just... Because 420 HC is not a very good steel. I mean, it's an old steel from the old days. You know, back in the day, in the 60s and 70s, 420 HC by Buck was considered like a premium steel. It was like a super, a super stainless steel back in the day. Because everybody had carbon blades. Stainless steel was just coming into the picture in the 1960s. And um, the 420HC was like a premium steel back then. And then, especially with the way the buck puts their, their, their heat, treat, heat treat on it, makes it better than regular 420C. But in today's world, it's kind of dated. But you know what? It still cuts good. It still cuts good. 
and it makes a good beater knife. These are only, this was like 23 bucks for this knife. This one was 100. It was like 99, 100 bucks. They get the premium materials. This, these two knives are basically the same knife. These two are basically the same knife. The only difference is the materials. The materials are different. This one's got high-end materials. And this one's got GFN handle scales and 420HC blade. Fit and finish on it is stellar. No wobble, no up and down, no nothing. It's, it locks up super tight. The construction on this knife is excellent. And this one actually opens up easier than the other one. This one feels more like a modern knife when you open it. This one you can feel, it feels more like a regular buck. It feels a little bit stiffer and a little bit harder to open. You have to use a little bit more finger pressure when you open. This one you don't have to use hardly any finger pressure. It just flies open. I actually like it. I bet you I could flick this one. I don't think I could flick this one. See the difference? Let's see if I can flick this one. Almost, not quite. But this one, the cheapest one, for 23 bucks, it's ready to rock and roll. This is a bad one. <laughs> now I like the way it looks, and they come in different colors too. You, you don't have to get black. I'm, you know me, I always like all my knives in black. I like dark knives. I don't like things that show up in my pocket. I wish the pocket clip was black. But you know, this pocket clip works really well too. It's kind of big and goofy looking, but it actually works really well, and the, the blade sits nice and deep in your pocket. If it was black, it'd be hidden. So it's a good little knife. 23 bucks, I think it's a great little beater knife. You know, it's got buck lock back, so it's a pretty strong knife. You know, it's a great little, it's a great little beater knife. That's why, I, that's why I look at that one. This one right here, this is one that comes with a sheath. And this is Buck's lightweight hunter, um, folding hunter that you put in a sheet. This one has FRN scales also, or polymer scales. So it's inexpensive. This is like 24 bucks. And it comes with a nylon sheath. Nylon buck sheath. So it's got the exact same steel, 420HC. Buck USA. And this one's shaped more like the original buck. This one has like the same dimensions as the original buck. But out of all of these, this one feels the cheapest in my hand. But you know what? It feels like a good work knife. So I can't knock it. But you know, for $24, you're not going to get an expensive knife. It'll do the job. Be a good hunter. Be a good work knife, good utility knife, good beater knife. Knife, knives are like, you know, I don't know, when I think of a knife that's a beater, I think of like a knife that costs like 20 to maybe 60 bucks in that category. Because my, my, uh, my beaters have always been the, um, the Voyager series from Cold Steel. I've been using those, as, I've been using the, 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 the Voyager Tonto as my beater knife for years. For like, since like 2009 or 2010 when they first came out. I can't remember when they first came out. But that's been, those have been my knives of choice for like my everyday beater knives. For example, this is my fanny pack. It goes to work with me every day. I carry it in my car or on my motorcycle. I wear it on my motorcycle. And that's the knife that's in it. That's my beater knife. My Oz 10 Cold Steel Triad. My very first Triad, the one that turned me on to getting the Triads, was one of these in Oz 8. And I've done videos on it, you guys have seen it. But I love the Cold Steel Voyagers as beater knives. The knives that you actually use for cutting stuff and and doing a, doing all your stuff with. Why? Because they're not number one, they're super good knives. And they can handle just about anything. And number two, they're not that expensive. This one I paid like 43 bucks for or whatever. It's a great knife. My fancier knives are they're more beautiful and I cherish a little bit more and stuff like that. 
I don't like to use them for stuff that, that, that might damage them or whatever. I use them for cutting simple things and you know, like if I, I, cause I carry all, I carry all pretty much all my knives and I use them for, you know, cutting simple things or whatever, but I won't cut things that I know might, might damage the blade or damage the edge. And that's what a beater knife is for when you got to cut those kind of things because you're not worried about it getting damaged because it doesn't have expensive to replace. That's just me. You know, I'm not a rich man, so I'm not going to take a $300 knife and thrash it. Not going to do it. Not going to be me. You have to find somebody else if you want to see that happen. <laughs> it won't be me. <laughs> I work too hard for my money. But anyway, in all my knives, none of my knives are given to me. All, my, all these knives that you see me have are knives that I purchase with my own money that I earned from my own from the from my own labor and so I don't tear up my knives that I know I know a lot of people have asked me how come you don't do this and how come you don't do that it's because I don't want to destroy my knives now if you want to send me if you want to send me a knife to destroy I'll do that I'm not gonna destroy something I spent a lot of money on and you know and like I said all these knives to me the reason why I collect them like I do is not, not only just because I love knives, but it's because they're sort of like an investment. Because, you know, instead of going out and buying beer and going out and chasing hookers and, 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 and fast women on my motorcycle, I, you know, I'd just rather, you know, collect a knife. You know, I slow myself down a little bit in my older age. But anyway, these are my bucks. Told you I was going to let you see them. This was my favorite buck. This one right here. That was my favorite. This is one out of all these I've carried the longest. Probably all, out of, pretty much out of all of my knives, I probably carried this one the longest. I don't think I never carried a knife for 10 years. Because I carried this one from like 1974. It might be longer than 10 years. It might be more like 15 years. Until about like the 1990s. Until 1980, 1990. Because I think it was about 1987 I, I started getting into ballast songs. Like 85, 85, 87. I started getting into ballast songs. I started buying Benchmade ballast songs. I have a whole bunch of Benchmade ballast songs too from the old days. And that, that, my collection of Benchmade ballast songs starts in the mid-1980s. When I first started buying them. But these are great knives. And unlike the Uncle Henry... And the, and the charades, the folding hunters I showed you last time, those are even more classic than these. Those are, those outdate these, those are older than these. These are more modern compared to that. Because in the 1960s, these were the modern knives. The Uncle Henry's and the, and the charades, those were old-fashioned knives in the 1960s. Those were like the knives that your grandpa had. But, uh, but these were the these were the new type of knives. These were like the new tactical knives or whatever, you know. There's a new thing in 1960s. These were like everybody had to have a buck knife. Buck knife were buck knives were like the most popular knives of all. Everybody in high school went that where I went to, you know, and everybody had buck knives and stuff like that. Everybody always wanted to have a buck knife. But this was the one I carried in high school. <laughs> I love this knife. I carried it for a long time long time it's been through all sorts of stuff I was a landscaper I was a tree trimmer I'd done all sorts of things with this knife I was an auto mechanic I was a diesel mechanic in the army I was a tank mechanic wheel vehicle mechanic deuce and a half some 5 tons and 10 tons and 20 ton trucks CEVs combat engineer vehicles with the blade on the front and the and the cannon, the short cannon, APCs, armored personnel carriers, M13A1s. I was a mechanic for a long time. Yeah. And this knife was always with me. <laughs> it's got a lot of memories in this knife. This one I will never sell. I will never sell that one. Knives that I carry a lot and have a lot of good memories with, I'll never get rid of them. Never. It's the ones I don't have memories with that I can sell. But anyway, there they are. My Buck 110 and 
it's clones copies. These are all 110s. Even the new ones, these are all called 110s too. 110, 110, 110, 110, 110, 110, 110. 110. And that's the Queen, Remington, Charade, Uncle Henry, and both of these are cases. That's it. Peace out. Stiletto.